pregame.com. Miami minus 13 and a half at Virginia. Thursday night college football. Who do you like and why? I like Virginia in this game, RJ, and this is a situation where it's all about value. I'm getting the best number with Virginia. I think this line is too high. It's an overreaction to one week's games. And last week, uh, this was I was involved in both of these games, one for the good and one for the very bad. Um, I went against Miami last week with Georgia Tech, and that was my big play. Everybody knows that. Uh, Owning it up was a big... I, I, they were talking about this on SportsCenter. Yeah, what, did they? Center, I, you yeah. know, it's big news when I lose a big play. <laughs> but the situation was Georgia Tech self-destructed themselves in the first quarter of that game. They threw an interception on the first, first play from scrimmage, and then on their next possession they tried an ill-fated uh, fake punt in their own territory. 14 nothing. they were behind, and Miami was playing uphill, the re you know, downhill the rest of the way, I should say. Situation-wise, as bad as Georgia Tech played, three turnovers, Miami was only able to muster 262 yards of offense against Georgia Tech. Also, they only scored three points in the second half after they scored a touchdown right before the half on a mismanagement of time by Georgia Tech to let them even have time on the clock. I'm looking at Virginia on the flip side. We gave uh, NC State out as one of the free plays last week. NC State was in a great spot to pull the upset over Virginia. Virginia was coming off an upset of Georgia Tech the week before as a 7.5 point underdog, then was playing at home as a favorite. I never like a dog, you know, winning outright and then in the favorites role, but what made it even worse is this game on the horizon. They were coming off an upset and then had to play look-ahead game, you've got Miami on TV on ESPN. So it was a great spot for Virginia to come up flat last week, which they did. Four turnovers in that game. So in your mind, the most recent result for both teams are deceiving, mm -hmm. and thus that's shifted the power rankings in a way that you don't think is really indicative of the true strength of the team's value. Absolutely. Uh, something you mentioned, and I think there, it's interesting, is if a team scores... 14 points off turnovers or some unusual um, happen or event during the game, all of those 14-point type things are not created equal, even beyond the number of points. It can be at what point during the game. It can be if a team has trouble playing from behind, they get down 14, now they got to start throwing. So I, I don't have enough insight into the specific happenstances on these two games to say, well, in this case, it meant even more than 14 points. But it's interesting you mentioned first quarter and how that can change the whole complexion of the game. So that's why I think box score review, not only yard, it's not, it's not enough to hear 480 yards. When did they get those yards? Was it at the end of the game? A couple turnovers early affected the game, et cetera. You know, you look at the Steelers and the Ravens week one, yeah, Baltimore clearly played better, but because of the turnovers and the way that the game played out, it was a more extreme score. 30-second example for you, which was the absolute play turning point of, of that game Saturday. Even after that 14-0 deficit, they clawed their way back to 14-7. They, they had first and goal inside the one with a minute left in the game. They got pushed out right at the pylons. They called timeout to stop the clock. You've got first and goal inside the one with a minute, and you've got timeouts left in the half. You don't call timeout there. You want to bring the clock all the way down, run your plays. They had timeouts to do it. They scored on the very first play, and then Miami got a big kick return that set them up. They had enough time to score the touchdown. So that momentum of cutting it to 14-7 turned into 21-7, and that was pretty much the wind out of the sails of Georgia Tech. You thought a lot about that game, didn't you? Unfortunately, yes, they did. <laughs> A <laughs> couple other points. Miami has lost six straight against the spread when laying more than 10 points. And they've only won 16 of 51. So this is a team 16 of 51 when they're laying more than 10 points. So this is a team that typically, and as you have 51 games, double digits or greater, you're starting to move many years in the past, but it's a program that usually is recruiting really strong athletes from the Florida area. Oftentimes, discipline is not at 
the forefront mm -hmm. of, with players like that. Not always, but, but oftentimes. And Miami doesn't seem to do well in the double-digit role, clearly. And, and to me, with trends, if you can understand why that it's happening, the trend has even more potency. Number two is... Just in general, we talk about this a good bit, is Thursday night home teams do a lot better. A lot of people think it's the crowd and the excitement. I think it's travel. I, you know, Oftentimes there's a buy, but sometimes there's not. It can be a very unusual situation. Uh, I haven't confirmed these numbers, but sources I trust, 62% the last five years home teams on Thursday night. So to me, that's on Thursday night. You got to start. The, I think it's home team or pass. Mm -hmm. You like the home team. Last point I would make is Virginia's offense has been sputtering. They've had a, a pretty unusual QB rotation this year, and they're actually talking about making a change this week, where instead of it being an equal rotation, one of the quarterbacks is going to get more time. So that's going to be, to me that's a type of disruption that can that can only be a negative. That's the one thing I don't like about Virginia, but I would have a slight agreement. Give us the official projection. I'm going to go with Miami actually winning the game, but only winning it by three, 23-20. I'm going to take Virginia plus the points, keep this a lot closer than people think. We're going to go with Virginia plus the points. All right, guys, this is Thursday's game, and every Thursday, all year round, 52 weeks a year, we have a best bet for a dollar at pregame.com. You can go into the uh, pregamepros.com is your direct link. And we got Dave Vessler for the dollar this week. What's his record? He's like 17 and four, guys. 17 and four, one. get his best play Thursday for a dollar. And remember, we had great success last week. In the forums, we are having every video we do, and we're gonna be putting the show notes from the participants. We're gonna be answering questions. It's just really taking this video and continuing the conversation. You can go there directly into the thread each week, pregamevideos.com. Talk to you there.